now, once again, live from Buffalo Wild Wings in College Park, here's Mark Turgeon and Johnny Holiday. And we'll flash back to Tuesday at the Garden up in New York, the Jimmy B Classic that Maryland participated in, all presented by Toyota Let's Go Places. Tuesday night at the Garden, electric up there. The Jimmy B Foundation put it together, the uh, charity basketball game that Maryland was involved in with Connecticut. They've raised over $150 million for cancer research from the Jimmy B Classic. It's an honor to play up there, Coach, and especially for such a good cause to benefit the late Jim Bob Adam. Yeah, you know, I was, uh, when Jim, Jim was coaching, I was at Kansas. We actually beat North Carolina State to go to the Final Four when I was a player in 86. Um, I was a senior in high school when they won the national championship. Uh, so I followed his career, and of course he did a great job with TV. Uh, to, and, and to make the impact that he's made is, as most people say, he, he'd be more proud of this than his national championship. 150 million, that's unbelievable numbers in a short time, and I think ESPN does a great job with it too. So, you know, they asked us, we were supposed to play it the year before, it didn't work out for us, this worked out a little bit better in our schedule. And uh, got to play a great team in UConn, so it's a fun night, we, you know, uh, we had a good crowd. UConn had a good crowd. It was pretty electric in there. You know, it was a big time NCAA tournament type game. It was, is what yeah. it was, and um, it was it was good to come out on top. You've had three like that: Georgetown, Carolina, and this one. Yeah, all those right, are all good, yeah. all, all good games for us. You know, Rhode, Rhode Island's a pretty strong team that we played. I think Illinois State will win a lot when they get into their league. So we played some good competition. Um, we still have Princeton on the horizon in the Big Ten, but. Um, those games help you learn more about yourself. You know, North Carolina exposed a lot of our weaknesses, and we were able to get better uh, in those things in that week, much better, um, and really, really improved us. So, you, you know, you continue to win by 30, and you're not playing great teams. You're, 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 you're not getting exposed. So these good teams expose you and it allows you to really understand where you are as a basketball team. Very impressive for the team also, Coach. You had a 20-point lead. They whittled it down to three, 67-64, with 2.44 to go. And then the Terrapins win by 10, 76-66, clutch free throw shooting down the stretch. Yeah, we did a great job all night getting to the line, especially in Mello. We were 23 for 29th line. It's part of our offense. It's what we do. Um, you know, I... I, I I would rather one by 20, but I think we got more out of it by the run they made at us. And they've done sure. it to every team. You know, they've been down at halftime to, and all three of their losses and, 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 and just came storming back. And the key is when the game was really on the line, we handled it. Um, and give them credit. They made some unbelievably tough shots uh, to whittle that down. And we weren't quite as efficient offensively during that stretch. I thought there was a goaltending call that wasn't called. Uh, would have helped us. Um, and I thought we got fouled on another one, uh, but that happens. You know, you got to overcome those things and, and guard. And uh, in the end, uh, you know, I felt like we dominated the game, <laughs> yeah, but it was a three-point yeah. game with two and a half to go. So uh, we'll get better at holding those leads. Uh, we came out at halftime and we were just not very good defensively. We were we went up 18 on a layup for Robert Carter, and then they it was it was 12 at the timeout. So our guys didn't do a very good job of handling first half success so hopefully we'll learn from that and start the second half better when we you know when we play so well in the first half. And the second half against uh, Connecticut Maryland shot 52 percent you wind up with 25 for Mello in that ball game that's a season high you had 16 for Diamond Stone back-to-back -back game 16 points and you had uh, nine rebounds that's a season high. Yeah he played well he was he was fired up uh, in that game he needs to be a little more efficient he took 15 shots to get 16 points so we like to get that sh shots down to about 10 and get 16 points, or even eight or nine, and, and uh, gets to the foul line more. But uh, he rebounded well, and what he did when he came in there, he just gave us a physicality that we didn't have in the starting lineup, and started getting some offensive rebounds. He started posting up hard, and he played with great emotion. I thought him and Melo kind of fed off each other that stretch where we built the lead up. So the Terrapins now eight and one. You win the game up there on Tuesday night, and you got Maryland Eastern Shore coming in. On Saturday, got whacked pretty good at Michigan State last night. Yeah, it's hard out there. These, these poor guys have been oh. traveling everywhere. They're actually here now. They flew here today, so they didn't go home. So, um, they, 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 you know, these guys play an unbelievably tough schedule. Yeah. So they'll be ready for us. They've seen it all. Uh, hopefully we'll be ready to, to keep getting better um, and improving on, you know, the improvement we've made the last, you know, 10 days or so. So uh, 
college basketball, is, it's brutal for those teams. And we get a lot of money in their pocket, I but uh, they have a really, really tough travel schedule. And uh, and uh, a couple good paydays for them. Um, and, you know, our guys will be fired up and ready to go. We'll talk a little bit later on about Maryland Eastern Shore. Losing last night by 43 at number one Michigan State, 78 to 35. When we come back, our special guest tonight, Even Bender, will talk about his rise up the basketball charts coming to America from Bosnia. And uh, I can't pronounce the first name there, Carl. I'll have even pronounced this. Klavdejima. Go ahead. And then also, where's it go? Close enough, right? We'll talk to even better in a minute on the Mark Turgeon Radio Show. Places. Now, once again, live from Buffalo Wild Wings in College Park, here's Mark Turgeon and Johnny Holiday. Our guest tonight is Even Bender, brought to you by Capital One Bank. That's the official bank of Maryland Athletics. And, Coach, maybe you can kind of set the stage here for the young guy from Bosnia, 6'9", 230-pound freshman, played in the other 18 Croatian national team and before he came to Maryland. Yeah, it was, um, you know, we were looking to add some more post players and, and Evan's name came up uh, through a guy that we knew and and uh, he was coming off back-to-back -back knee surgeries uh, on the same knee. And um, and so we really didn't know. I, I watched film of him that was probably a year and a half old and um, he was good. This was before, before his first injury. And, um, you know, you saw a lot there and he was a lot skinnier, a lot younger. Um, and uh, but people there, you know, said he's a great kid and he can, you know, he's going to develop and get better and can really help you. I liked, what I liked is how well he passed the ball, his feel for the game, and he had a great understanding. I didn't expect him to be this big and this strong. He's actually, you know, he's worked hard with Kyle to get there, but uh, he's become a very good player. Just a really smart player. So we're lucky to have him. He redshirted last year, had to pay a little NCAA penance. Uh, there to, to get eligible, but uh, he's, he's really helped us the last couple of games. You never could quite understand that NCAA eligibility thing, Yeah, but he paid his dues, and now yeah. you're with us, and it's so great to be playing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Nothing like it, huh? Finally. <laughs> finally, yeah, <laughs> finally. And Coach had mentioned six rebounds, five points in four minutes the other night. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I was happy to come there and help my guys and take win that. And I was happy because of myself, that was the first official game after sure. a long time. So I was just excited and ready to play, and I'm just happy. And, and you worked hard to get ready to get back to play, rehabbing from the injuries, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, so two years back to play, as wow. coach says, SEL and same knee, and all summer with Coach Kyle, and preseason and everything, we worked really hard. And we prepare really well. Can you compare the the type of play that you're going through now, with the teammates you have and the, the games you played in already, to the under 18 Croatian team you played for? Well, this is, I would say, the best team I've ever been, and we are we are playing really good. And basketball here is really tough. Every night you have to be 100% prepared for the game, and if you are not, you 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 look bad. But in my under-18 team, you always know what team is good and what team is not good. So you be prepared for a good team, but you always said that bad team will be than 30. But it's a big difference here because yeah, every team play good. And as I said before, you have to be prepared and be focused every night. And coach has got to make him feel like a million bucks to know the confidence you have in him. A lot of guys he could have brought into this program, but you're the guy. Yeah, and I, I think I had to show him a lot of confidence. I put him in that game the other night. Yeah. Um, you know, he's really practiced well and, uh, you know, even does whatever I ask him to do, whether it's the scout team or, or uh, the scout team and our shell drill, uh, but it gets him more time on the court. And, um, you know, I don't know if he was nervous, unexpecting, you know, that when I yelled his name the other night at the Garden, but he, he went in there and did a ni really nice job. So that's got to give him a lot of confidence. Uh, you grew up, and when you, uh, when you played in the Croatia, can you talk a little bit about when you went through high school over there? Did you learn English Well, at, at a young age? 
Yeah, I started learning, learning English in my fifth grade. Fifth grade. Yeah, but that wasn't that serious in that. Like, if you really want to learn English, then you have to study. But I never thought that I would uh, come here and that I will have to know English. So I didn't care that much about English. But when I came here, I had to learn. So I was in English Institute here in MEI classes. So I, did, I took that serious. And I think I improved my English since I came here. Uh, there's nothing to apologize. Your English is great, believe me. And you've got 13 English teachers that can help you <laughs> on this basketball team. <laughs> Those aren't the best teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, good. you'll learn you'll learn a different language probably sometimes as yeah. well. Huh? What's the what's been the most interesting thing that you've gone through day by day in practice, going up against Diamond, going up against uh, Demonte Dodd, or trying to stop Melo from driving down the lane? Most interesting thing that is being that I have to be prepared every day, every practice, every practice I have to be focused because. I used to play only against, let's say, one good guy on my position, but here is four, four great guys that everybody want to play, everybody can play in this high level, so I have to be 100% in if I want to do something, you know. Have you met anybody like Kyle Tarp? Did you have a performance coach in Croatia, a strength and conditioning guy like well, him? Well, I have, but not, not, not like Kyle. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Yes. He works you hard, but he knows he knows exactly how to get you to that success level. He is professional. I like him. I love him. When I came here, you, well, didn't, you didn't love him when you got yes, here. Yes, that's true. <laughs> you were scared of him. That's true. Uh, but now uh, I realized after a long time that he really helped me on everything, on my body, on my movement, or the way of uh, taking uh, care of practice and taking care of my body because it's a big difference from the past and now. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what the what's the classroom work? Classroom? Yeah. Um, I like, I mean, I don't like that much school, but I have to go there. I, I'm doing pretty well in classes. I'm taking four classes. One is online, three, three is on campus. Good for you. Yeah. And he's still on the MEI program, so he's got a really heavy load. And, um, it's really difficult uh, on him and, and Checo, and Checo's in the mainstream now, and even will be in the mainstream next semester, so um, he's done a great job, and he's been humble. He's a very good student, and um, I, don't, I don't lay in bed at night wondering whether he's doing his homework or not, because I know he is, so, um, and, and whether he's making good decisions off the court, because I know he is, so him and Checo have been great additions to our team, great guys and, and great teammates. You don't want to play even Bender in table tennis, do you? Because no. Even, no, even's going to take you to the cleaners, I guarantee you. You mean ping pong? We call it ping pong, Johnny. <laughs> ping pong. It's table tennis back in. Table tennis oh, okay. in the spare yeah, time, I, I right? said that, yeah. I said oh, okay. <laughs> no, he's, really, he's probably the champ of our team. Did anybody beat you? No. Yeah, Not he's yet. the champ. So we have the team over to our house. we got a table tennis in, in my house, and everybody runs from me even when he grabs the paddle. So I think you brought your own paddle one time, didn't you? No. <laughs> That's the Jamal did that. Line. Yeah, Jamal did. Yeah. Now your folks are still over there in, in Bosnia. Yes. 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 Do they have it? Will they have a chance to come over and see you play here? Well, not this year. Probably next year. My bro, uh, my family been in my brother's place in Israel. Okay. So probably next year. Tell them about your brother. You yeah. brag about your brother a little bit. My brother is two years younger than I am. He's 18, and he signed professional contract last summer for Maccabi Tel Aviv in Israel. And he's doing really well. Uh, he's 18 and he's 7 1. So he, wow. Yeah, he's pretty tall. So I don't know how long the contract is, but he will be a top five pick in the NBA draft, probably top. Yeah, for the next year. For next year. Yeah, he's a special player. So. Boy, that's terrific. So is even. Yeah, that's terrific. Well, it's great to have you at the university. Terrific to see you playing. We wish you nothing but the best. And the best is yet to come with even better. Yeah, thanks. Thank thanks, thanks so Steven. much. Okay, bud, thank Good you. Job, we'll take a break and be back in a minute on the Mark Turgeon Radio Show from Buffalo Wild Wings in College Park.
Welcome back to the Mark Turgeon Radio Show on the Maryland Sports Radio Network. The Mark Turgeon Radio Show is brought to you by these network broadcast partners. Capital One Bank, the official bank of Maryland Athletics, and by Toyota. Let's go places. Now, once again, live from Buffalo Wild Wings in College Park, here's Mark Turgeon and Johnny Holiday. And welcome back to the Mark Turgeon Radio Show at Buffalo Wild Wings. Back in 1970, he was the number one high school basketball player in America. Coming out of Mansfield, Pennsylvania, the biggest recruit that Lefty Brazil had. In fact, he out-recruited Dean Smith to get him to come to Maryland and not North Carolina. Tom McMillan's on the phone tonight, arguably one of the top players, if not the all-time best player that Maryland's ever had suit up in a uniform. Tom, it's great to have you with Coach and I tonight, wherever you are. I know you're on a plane somewhere. No, I was coming back to New York, but it's really great to be with uh, you and Coach Turgeon tonight. Hey, Tom. How you doing, bud? I'm great. Congratulations on a uh, good, great start, Mark. Yeah, I appreciate it. You had, uh, you had a pretty nice seat the other night. Yeah, you know, it, it was great. Uh, you know, Madison Square Garden brings back so many memories for me, you know, having played here as a Nick in, in college. And uh, you guys did very well. You came out well prepared. Ready to play and lots of energy, and that, that was great to see. Yeah, it was a great game, great environment, and uh, it was good to see a lot of former players there. A lot of a lot of Terps were there. It was a lot of pride in the building, Terp pride in the building, and we might have been outnumbered a little bit, but we weren't out uh, out yelled or however we however you say that. Our guys did a great job, so um, yeah, it was fun. Out of the box, ready to play. That makes yeah. all the difference. No, yeah. no doubt, no doubt. You played you played for the legendary Lefty Brazil. How did it? How did it work out where Lefty uh, won out over Dean Smith to make sure you came to Maryland, not go to Chapel Hill? Well, you know, I don't have, I'm sure we don't have all night to tell you that story, but the real simple short answer is that my father was ill my senior year in high school, and I really wanted to have him see me play, and, and Maryland was close, and I liked what Coach Rizal was doing, and uh, it turned out very well. My father saw all my games until past my senior year, so. Yeah, and, you know, Lefty, you know, Lefty did a great job, and, and not many people beat Dean, Dean Smith back in the day, so, and it helped turn our program, you know, um, you think about the players that came in with Tom and the teams that he played on, and unfortunately for them, uh, they weren't as lucky as we are to get multiple teams into the NCAA tournament, or, you know, we might have more than one national championship, that's for sure. And Tom, you won the first year 27 games, 23 wins, 23 wins, 24 wins, and only one team went to the NCAA tournament. Well, it's a different game, you know, the rules change, uh, we played less games, uh, but, you know, it's still college basketball, it was exciting, and it was a triple overtime game against North Carolina State, it's kind of regarded as one of the great games in college sports, and, uh, you know, it's really what the essence of college sports is about, it's exciting, people love it, uh, and, uh, you know, it was a great experience for me, Maryland was a... Uh, a great school that turned out to be terrific for me, both academically and athletically. Yeah, go ahead. Well, we, uh, Tom, you know, one thing I had Tom do, because obviously Tom was the only road scholar we've ever had, and, and um, I had him come talk to our team about time management and how to handle athletics and academics, and uh, no one handled it better than he did uh, in his years. But... Uh, you know, he did that a couple of years, and, and I know when he's around the guys, he talks about prioritizing your, your time, and uh, it's different. It's different today with the social network and all that stuff. But Tom's Tom's been a good friend of the program since I've been here, and and, and he's helped me bring, you know, a lot of the players back into the program uh, that you know hadn't been around for a while. So Tom's been great, been a great friend. Hey Tom, even yeah, though I think, I think Mark's done a great job of trying to reconnect. Uh, traditions and generations and I think that's extremely important to build the kind of program and tradition. Sorry, sorry Johnny. I was just going to say, uh, even though you had such tremendous years with Lenny Elmore, John Lucas and Jim O'Brien and those guys, and to this very day you still hold the career scoring average for one season, in the, as, for one career, 20 points a game back in the 70s. If you were playing now, you'd still, you'd probably average more than that now. Well, we didn't have the three-point play, which uh, 
three-point shot, sorry, that really, I think, changed college basketball. I would love to have it because it's a lot easier than the three in the NBA. And, uh, you know, with the kind of guard like John Lucas, I mean, he drove in and popped it back out. It was it was terrific. And uh, so I, I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to play with that, that uh, you know, the, that, that three-point play. So... Hey, what? Tom, tell, tell everybody a little bit about what you're doing now, this new venture you took on in charge of all the athletic directors and what your mission is and what a great responsibility you have. Hey, I just took over the CEO and president of what's called Division 1A, the Athletic Directors Association, made up of all the ADs of 129 of the top college athletic programs in the country. And there are a lot of challenges in college sports, as you know. Uh, and whether it's litigation or trying to get reasonable legislation with the NCAA, sometimes issues in Congress come up, concussions, uh, all the you know all of the problems and challenges. So uh, Kevin Anderson approached me about it. I thought it was interesting. They uh, they were based in Dallas. I said you know I wouldn't be interested in Dallas, but. They moved it to Washington. I would have, I would take a look, and, the, and they actually agreed to do that. And so, I've been on this for two months, and it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's a great time. I mean, there's such an opportunity in college sports. It's gonna, there's gonna be a lot of issues that come up over the next couple of years that are gonna require leadership and pulling together the ADs who really run these programs. I mean, we represent four billion dollars of athletic programs across the country and it's that's monumental and that's that's a very, very big big chunk of uh, money and also it's the importance of these programs far out how far outweigh their revenue. So it's it's a it's a fun challenge. Now before we let you go, maybe you could give us your observations. What do you what have you seen so far? from this basketball team that Coach Turgeon has that really impresses you so far? Well, I, I, in the beginning, when they started out, I've seen most of the games, either on TV or person, I was a little concerned, but because I knew that you're putting a whole new group of guys together, that takes time to build chemistry. But what I've seen is chemistry build. And you've got three legitimate, great players, you know, Mello and Suleiman and, and Robert Carter. I mean, they're very, very talented guys. And, the key is you got to make the sum greater than the parts, and I be, I'm beginning to see that happening. And I think that's that's what coaching and teams are all about. I mean, you're not going to go very far as an all-star team. Working together and playing together, you'll go a long way. And I, I, I'm beginning to see that that manifest, and it's really very exciting. Yeah, and I agree, and he's exactly right. And it's it's taken us some time. We weren't together this summer, and. You know, it showed. We, we've done. You know, we've we've gotten. I wouldn't say lucky, but we've got it out a couple wins, and uh, but we continue to grow, and it's really fun for me right now. Uh, practice is fun. You know, we lost the North Carolina game, but the guy showed me something, and since that game, we've really uh, become a better basketball team. So it's fun. Tom's Tom's right on. Tom, thank you so much. I know you're very busy. We really appreciate you joining us tonight and take a time to share some of your memories. I really appreciate Always it. Always a pleasure. Good luck tomorrow night. I'll be watching. All right, All right. Thanks, Tom. Thanks so much, Tom. The great Tom McMillan, one of the all-time greats at the University of Maryland, 1971 to 1974, averaged 20 points a game, 79% at the line, shot 55% from the floor with 1,807 points, 859 rebounds, an All-American first-round pick by the Buffalo Braves in the NBA. We've got some emails for Coach Turgeon when we come back on the Mark Turgeon radio show from Buffalo Wild Wings in College Park. Five seconds. Welcome back to the Mark Turgeon Radio Show on the Maryland Sports Radio Network. The Mark Turgeon Radio Show is brought to you by these network broadcast partners. Capital One Bank, the official bank of Maryland Athletics, and by Toyota. Let's go places. Now, once again, live from Buffalo Wild Wings in College Park, here's Mark Turgeon and Johnny Holiday. And as always, one of the highlights of our show here, there's a lot of highlights, but this is one of them. That's to check the inbox to get the fan mails, the emails for Coach Turgeon. You can have one as well. Go to umterps.com, click on the Ask Coach Turgeon button, brought to you by University of Maryland Medical Center. One from Ken Davis. 
in Baltimore. What was the experience like for the guys to play in Madison Square Garden Tuesday night, one of the most famous arenas in the world? Well, it was a great experience because we won the game <clears throat> and we played well. Now, uh, we didn't make a big deal of it. We didn't talk about it a lot. We, you know, we, we talked about our opponent, talked about the atmosphere and all that. I think our guys handled it really well. Um, it was a big time electric you know, energy in the building. And I, I thought we just handled it well. I think we're maturing uh, with that. And I think afterwards, everybody was really proud. And a lot of guys got in the game, and, and now they can always say they played a game in Madison Square Garden, which is right. pretty cool. What from Corey Zeller, coach in Bethesda, if anybody, who do you think stepped up the most during Tuesday's one over UConn? Well, we had a lot of guys step up. I, I, I can go across the board. Obviously, Diamond came in and gave us great minutes. Mello was Mello. He did terrific things. Rashid's all about winning all the time. You know, he doesn't care if he scores two or 16 or whatever, but he's trying to do everything he can to help us win. And I thought Jake Lehman did a tremendous job on that Hamilton kid who's a heck of a player. Uh, but really, the MVP of the game was our transition defense. Uh, it was as bad as it could be at North Carolina, and we did a really nice job in our transition defense the other night. And one more from Jonathan Reichel, listening at Hagerstown, Maryland. Do you have to adjust, Coach, the team's practice schedule at all during finals week? That's a great question, yes. We'll, uh, we'll play the game Saturday. Um, guys are in study hall right now tonight. Um, we will um, take Sunday off. We're actually going to practice Monday evening. It's the only time we can get uh, practice Monday evening. It will be a light practice. Um, just to kind of get them in the gym, but not have them for very long hour, and they'll lift. Uh, we'll take Tuesday off. We'll actually go Wednesday and Thursday mornings uh, oh. practice, and then Friday afternoon. So, uh, you know, Wednesday's practice, kind of long, hour and a half, not really long, and Thursdays will be a tough day, and then Friday we'll dial back again for the game on Saturday. Any questions for Coach Turgeon, go to umterps.com, click on the Ask Coach Turgeon button, all brought to you by the University of Maryland Medical Center. We'll come back and look ahead to Maryland Eastern Shore, the Terrapins' next opponent. That'll be Saturday at 4.15 at Xfinity Center, right after these messages. Matt Mark Turgeon Radio Show on the Maryland Sports Radio Network. The Mark Turgeon Radio Show is brought to you by these network broadcast partners. Capital One Bank, the official bank of Maryland Athletics, and by Toyota. Let's go places. Now, once again, live from Buffalo Wild Wings in College Park, here's Mark Turgeon and Johnny Holiday. Now, the Miller Coors Cold Art Fact Series History brought to you by Coors Brewing Company. Remember, 21 means 21. The series began in 1979 with Maryland Eastern Shore. Maryland won that game 82-58. Since that time, they've not lost. 16-0 against the Hawks. The last meeting was 2012, 168 been a tough road for Maryland Eastern Shore coach. They got number one Michigan State last night. Now they get number six Maryland on Saturday. Yeah, and, and, and I haven't really looked at their schedule, but I know they've played a lot of road games, um, a lot of tough ones. And um, uh, yeah, so it, it's it's fun their program, fun other program type games that they're playing. It's something they have to do to, to be at the Division One level. But uh, I tell you what, uh, coach there has done a great job. Uh, I think we played them my first year here, maybe my second. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. I, it's I'm losing it, but he, the program's gotten better. He's done a nice job uh, with the program, and um, you know they're doing well in their league, uh, and should be one of the better teams in the league, which is you know what you, what you shoot to be uh, yeah. at that level. And they got a good player, Dominic Elliott, had 11 points last night. That loss to Michigan State. It should be a lot of fun. A chance to get another notch in your belt in the win column. Hope so, but we're, you know, we're looking forward to it, and that big, big kid is a heck of a player. Yeah. It'll be a tough challenge for us. All right, Coach, as always, thanks so thanks, much. Thanks, Johnny. Great to see you again, and thanks to all the folks for coming out tonight and listening all around the state of Maryland. Tom Marquito has been alongside our technical director, Tish Wright, up in Total Control up in Baltimore. We hope you'll join me along with Chris Knocky, Walt Williams at 345 Saturday, Maryland against Maryland Eastern Shore. Good night.